Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Welcome back to our discussion on STM32 microcontrollers and uh, beginner level course. And in this course, we were talking about the seven segment displays. Basically, we are talking about the GPIO uh, pins or GPIO module where the output of uh, microcontroller is controlling the LEDs. So we had previously discussed how we can control the LEDs through different methods. And then we had seen if arranging the LEDs in a particular pattern like uh, seven segment display, we can actually uh, make different numbers like this. So this is just like the LEDs are um, playing. Like if you can see, so I have turned on both these things. These LEDs are also turn, turning on and off. And when these same LEDs are arranged in a particular fashion, they are forming numbers. Right, so, so far, so good. But what if we want a, a number more than a single digit, like two digits, three digits, or four digits? So as you can see that each digit has eight uh, LEDs, seven in the uh, for the numbers, and there is also usually one for the decimal point. So each LED will require one IO line. So if a seven segment display single digit is uh, being used, you will need at least seven or maybe eight IO lines if you want to control the uh, decimal point as well. So if uh, the number of digits are increased, like in this four digits, so the number of lines required will be 32. So 32 IO lines from the microcontroller will be used to control these uh, different LEDs. So usually in microcontrollers, we are all usually we are short of the uh, IO lines and it is usually required that we do not consume too many IO lines from the microcontroller. So a number of techniques have been evolved uh, to reduce the number of IO lines and to uh, control the more digits in the seven segment displays. One option can be uh, active displays in which the displays already have their own microcontroller or microprocessor and they can accept a serial data from the microprocessor which will send only the required information to be displayed and the display controller will display it. But here we are going to discuss uh, that uh, every intelligence that we want in this uh, project should be controlled by our own microprocessor. So today we are going to talk about this um, STM32 seven segment LED displays multiplexed. So these displays are, or this technology is called multiplexing. <laughs> like here you can see there's a single digit and here you can see there are four digits uh, in a clock. So all these four digits, they definitely require a special way of uh, controlling their individual segments to show the different numbers. Like here, these two segments are on here, these different segments are on here, these different segments are on. So we definitely need a way to control these individual LEDs. Of, after all, there are eight multiplied by four, 32 LEDs in these uh, displays. So one way can be to have a dedicated uh, driver chip uh, that is driving the, uh, the LED display. And these displays are in turn controlled by, these drivers are in turn controlled by the uh, clock circuitry or the, or the microprocessor or the microcontroller. So we will need uh, four in order to control the four digits. We will need four driver display, driver ICs that will be driven by the microcontroller and each of these driver ICs will require four lines, not eight lines. So still we will be needing um, uh, 
16 lines from the microcontroller to control each of these uh, driver ICs. And secondly, the project will have uh, four more ICs. That would mean more circuitry, that would mean more cost, and that would mean uh, more uh, difficult routing to the uh, uh, PCB. So this idea is uh, good for individual designs which were uh, before this microcontroller era, but now they are, these are not uh, used these days. Like this is the example of the same clock or maybe a different clock in which there are different driver chips which are driving individual uh, displays and then these displays, these chips are individually controlled by the timing circuitry etc. Et so the circuit is complex, components are more, wiring is more and um, uh, but these are all dedicated chips which can perform only a particular job. They cannot do anything else. If this circuit is made for clock, it can do only a clock uh, job. It cannot be used to display the temperature. Or it cannot be used to display the uh, acceleration of something or like that. So we are going to use uh, or exploit uh, a, a, a God gifted um, uh, feature of our eyes, and that is called persistence of vision. In persistence of vision, our eyes, whatever they perceive, the image is retained for one tenth of a second due to the chemical and uh, electrical changes in, in the retina or the sensors of our eyes. So if an LED turns on and turns off immediately, but the image of that LED will remain in our eyes for one tenth of a second. So in these following two videos, I will be showing you the basic concepts of this persistence of vision. As you can see here, the man is, uh, is turning around a torch. And since it is only one point of light, but we can see a complete circle. That is because of the persistence of vision. As you can see here, different letters are written on two sides of the flipboard. And these do not make any sense. But when we flip them together at a high speed, we see this letter merging together as Mr. Wizard's world. You can read it now. This is persistence of vision. Right. So when now when you know uh, the concept of this persistence of vision, so in this technique of uh, 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 displays, the two displays like this, there are two displays, D0 and D1, and the, all the segments of these displays are connected together. Like this segment A is connected to D9 and the segment A of this, this display is also connected to D9. So this is surprising that when we will turn this D9 high, both segments of A of both digits will turn on. This will also turn on, this will also turn on. So how will we make the two digits look different? The method is that the common point of these displays, or which is the ground or the common cathode point, that is also being controlled by the microcontroller. So either this display is active or this display is active. When we want to turn this segment on, we turn this segment on and this display off. So the the let the digit A, the segment A will turn only on in this display and not on this. Display. This display will be blank. Next, we want to turn this segment on. So we will turn the, uh, the D segment, A, B, C, D, this one, this one on. And we will turn this transistor off and we will turn this transistor on. This will enable this display and the D will be appear on this thing. So we will be periodically doing this this thing 
uh, toggling between these two displays when this is on this segment will be turned on and when this is on this segment will be turned on so this is will be repeated so fast that our eyes will not be able to perceive the flicker and you will see both displays on at the same time while in fact only one display is being on at a, any given time we will see it later like in this demonstration you can see that we are turning one two three four so when this digit is on this is enabled when this digit is on this is enabled when this digit is on this is enabled so at any given time only one digit is on and the pattern of the number leds which is which are to be turned on is also changed every time the different digit is selected so <clears throat> either you can have uh, individuals uh, seven segment display modules like the ones we have already seen and connect their pins together but that will require a manual routing or connections uh, we get in the market these type of modules where all the internal segments are already connected so these displays they have 12 pins six on this side and six on other side so the pins are labeled as a b c d e f and g so these are the different segments this is segment a segment b segment c segment c segment d segment e e and f and then is the decimal point so all the connections are connected together but their cathodes are taken out individually this is for digit one this is for digit two this is for digit three this is for digit four so we have the, to control the cathodes of these individual LDs by sequentially activating d1 d2 d3 and d4 to enable the display on individual digits like this so all the a b c d e f are connected to the respective uh, segments of the microcontroller and the cathodes are connected through these transistors in this form it is common anode type display so these transistors are connected to other four pins of the microcontroller so in total we will need eight pins for the display and four pins for the individual transistors to uh, control this display so we will need eight and four twelve we will need 12 io lines from the microcontroller and this will enable us to display the numbers on uh, 32 leds this technique is called multiplexing as i have already told you so this is the more simplified uh, diagram of the same thing that all the segments a b c d e f g which are connected together are connected to these pins and individual transistors which are connected to the cathodes of these displays they are connected to different four pins of the microcontroller <clears throat> it is better to use these transistors to sync the current because whenever a, a number is on and you have turned all the leds on the current syncing is so high that uh, uh, syncing to an individual microcontroller pin is not a good idea we can do it in simulation no problem but in practical examples you should use transistors to sync the current for experiments and hobbyists use these kinds of modules are available from various uh, developers where the seven segment displays have, have been put and four transistors are, have been placed and individual uh, segments are available as headers and individual uh, transistor spaces are available as header to control the deck segments same is here in which here the, are the pins for the leds and here are the pins for the uh, uh, transistors to control them 
so we are going to display one two three four in our uh, example let's say so when there is number four to be displayed we need to send a mask 0x66 and we have to activate the pin PA8 because in our case we have uh, uh, connected the cathodes directly to the microcontroller so at zero on the microcontroller pin will activate the uh, digit one will inactivate the digit so next if we want to display three we have to change the active digit to second digit zero here then if we want to display the number two we have to send the mask 0x5p and activate the respective uh, io line so in this way sequentially uh, we will be able to display one two three four and we do it so fast and so rapidly that our eyes will not be able to see the flicker or the change in this uh, displays in simulation or proteus it may not be possible to do such a fast uh, changes uh, but the concept will be clear and we will be able to check our program whether it is working or not but uh, actually when you run the program on the actual hardware with the actual microcontroller and the actual display the results are really static so let's move on to our code uh, first of all let's enable this i have excluded from simulation or oh, let's enable it and just to show you uh, you can see four three two one four three two one and every time this is one digit is selected the one which is blue is selected and one with red is not selected now let's see the program so as usual we have defined the mask uh, as a bitmap pattern and we have taken an array of digit of four which will hold the pattern of display for individual uh, number and then we have made a function which is called digitize so let's discuss this function first so we will pass a number like 1234 which is 1234 to this uh, function and this will break the digits like 1 2 3 4 into the individual uh, these digits of, uh, of an array of four elements so that we will be able to select individual number or individual mask which is to be displayed on the screen so in this function uh, if you want to jump you just go here and say open declaration uh, here is it. so digitize function so this digitize function is accepting a 16-bit number which is two bytes number and what we do is we break this number into individual uh, digits by dividing the number by 1000 first and this will give you the first digit one and then we uh, divide the number by 1000 and take its modulus which is the remainder so when we divide the number one two three four by 1000 and take its remainder remainder the rest is the 234 so now we have 234 in n so again we divide it by 100 and we will get the 100th digit then we divide by 10 when we get the 10th digit and then finally we will have the fourth digit so this is how you separate the uh, digits into uh, <clears throat> separate numbers so then each of these numbers you get the mask from the from the array and you store that uh, mask into the respective digits digit of three digit of two digit of one and digit of zero then what we do is now now here comes the multiplexing 
this is the multiplexing for first digit you have to set all the lines off so we have passed 0x fff so that all the pins are in the reset state uh, uh, as you can see here our controller is connected to PA0 to PA7 for digits and PA8, PA9, 10 and 11 these uh, these lines are controlling the display uh, the display digits so first we reset them and uh, and then we have to turn the these this these these number these pins high so that none of the numbers is being displayed because you turn these digits these lines zero and you have to turn these lines high uh, as these are being connected directly uh, to the microcontroller and this is a common cathode display Then you write the digit 0 uh, which has been separated from the digitized command, digitized function and then you select the appropriate digital pin high, uh, pin to low to select that digit. Then we give 500 millisecond delay and then we repeat the same process but this time we display digit 1 and select the next display which is pin number 9. Then we repeat the same process and this time digit 2 and we will select the pin number 10 and so on and this process will be repeated again and again so if we compile this project project build project and we run it so it is showing 1 2 3 4 we have delayed made delay of only 500 milliseconds here only to show you the uh, the multiplexing process so if we want to show the different number we will just change this number here into digitize like if we want to show uh, 9087 so we will compile it and now we see the displays are showing different number 9870 so this was the basic idea of the multiplexing so we can improve this code because so much code is being repeated so after getting this idea we can improve this code by making these things happen in a loop so i just uh, and now this is the second method uh, I just want to and uh, here is the second method so let's uncomment it <coughs> here instead of the repeating the all the process one by one i have put it in a loop controlled by the number a, a variable named a and every time uh, in a loop we select the digit a and we shift the bits by by the number a so that to select the digit so now again let's build this project and now let's see whether it's working or not and you can see it is working the same way as previously with individual uh, uh, digitizing so we can further reduce the code by because here uh, we are separating the the, the the pins of the microcontroller which are sending the data and which are controlling the digits in the separate lines since both of these lines are on the same uh, um, 
port and they are in sequence we can take this liberty and and make these two lines merge together into one statement by using the or statement so if i uncomment it and let's build this project and now we see so again the result is same or and the code size has been reduced dramatically to just three or four lines instead of that uh, so many lines so this method is basically demonstrates how multiplexed led led displays work although um, good idea but this method of uh, controlling the multiplex displays is not good because it continuously requires this code to be run every some time to, to update your display so if this method is called polling because we are continuously in in the while loop we are continuously in this loop and checking it so if for example here we have some other statement like to update some display or to update some data from the serial port so if the microcontroller is busy getting data from some other sensor or some other display this might not be appropriately updated and you will get some flicker on your display so the, another method and which is a better method of updating this display is to use the timer interrupts we will be talking about interrupts later on so we will show you the updated method of uh, updating the display the concept will be the same but this code of executing this code will not be in the while loop but it will be controlled by the uh, uh, timer interrupt so i hope uh, now we are clear about the gpios and to some extent about the uh, <clears throat> displays we have talked about the single digits we have talked about the multiplex displays and uh, now we will continue on to the next topic uh, which might be I, I might like to use the switch to get the input and then update this display or um, maybe an LCD display let's see inshallah we'll be updating you on the next video hope you are enjoying it do give us a feedback and uh, your feedback is actually an encouragement to us that people are getting benefit from these discussions thank you very much stay best Allah Hafiz.